Welcome to part six of robotic arm manipulation with reinforcement learning. As you can see on the screen, um, our second training run here was very successful. So far we're up to um, a score of about 180 on the task of opening the door. And uh, next we need to figure out how to test our, uh, test our agent. So, you know, we can see these really good scores, but right now that's just an item on a graph. That's not actually the robot um, you know, watching the robot do what it's doing. So let's go ahead and code out our test.py. We added some of that functionality earlier just to get things set up, um, but now we need to go ahead and finish it out. And uh, then towards the end of this video, we are going to talk about parametric experiments. So in test, uh, we did, we had our envsuite.make, um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to copy most of the parameters from our main function here. So we'll go ahead and copy actor learning rate um, down to agent here. We'll need all of that. We'll need to come up here and go ahead and say from td3.torch import agent so that we've actually got our agent um, let's see we will need a end games and in fact really it might be easier to see what's different than uh, than what's the same so we don't need writer we need end games, best score. Um, we do want to load models, and then we want to go ahead and really just copy the rest of this over instead of typing it out. And then the parts that we need to cut out um, are pretty simple. We don't need writer because we're not saving any statistics. Um, we explicitly don't want to save our models because again, we're, we're testing, we're not training, we don't want to make changes. And then we don't need remember or learn because we're not going to be remembering the things that we do um, and we don't want to you know, try to learn from them. Um, that could actually be detrimental if you, uh, especially if you're still actively training the robot um, and you are you know, using a test script that is, uh, is overriding your results or making changes. So we want to load models, we never want to save models, and we don't want to store any of the data. Um, so we can see down here, my training run's still going. I've got you know 500 runs or so, and uh, I've got my, I'm up to you know scores in the high 270s. Um, I would recommend you probably don't want 10,000 games, you probably want maybe three to get a, a test sample. And now we can go ahead and I'm just gonna switch from main to current file and run it and see what our results look like. All right, so we're clearly missing something because while it ran quote unquote successfully, we did not get um, the, the robot pop-up that I was expecting here. So, let's see what we might have missed. We've got a renderer, we've got a camera observation, which should be false, that's correct. We're saying front view, we're saying true, true. Uh, let's see, ah, I recall, we need to, we actually need to print a, uh, an explicit env.render here with the way this is set up. So down here under observation, we're gonna say env.render and that'll just tell it each time, hey, go ahead and render. And then something else that's actually, I'm not gonna add more code, let's run it and I'll show you the problem and then we'll fix it. So here we are with render and it doesn't seem to be going anywhere. And it's also going kind of fast. So we've got a couple of things to look at there. 
So something I found useful, um, so two things. It looks like we successfully loaded models, but for whatever reason, the test script is not doing as well um, as we might think it should based on the results we're getting for the main script. And it's going a little bit faster than we want it to. So I'm going to say time.sleep 0.03, and that should just slow it down a little bit, um, which is useful. And then let's see. So we've got agent choose action. We've got our observations. We're adding score to rewards. All of this looks good. This looks normal. Um, let's go see what else we might be missing. Ah, so here's a, a common um, thing that can happen. We have TD3 torch. So right here in our choose action function, we set a, uh, a number of validation steps. So for the first uh, warm up equals warm up number of steps and warm ups equals a thousand, we are basically saying, you know, hey, um, do random things so that it can start learning. So this is where we actually need to pass in validation to our choose action function. So up here, we're just going to say validation equals true. And we're going to run it again and see if we get better results. Hey, there we go. And we have our robot now successfully opening the door. And we'll let him run a couple more times. And something you'll notice with the way this is set up, it really doesn't know what to do after it's opened the door. Um, you know, it's going to run for those 300 time steps no matter what. So there's no, you know, hey, door has opened and we've been successful. And it just kind of flails around randomly um, after the door's open. But it does successfully achieve the task most of the time. Something else I've noticed about TD3 that I did not notice with, uh, with you know, DDPG and some of the other algorithms I played with, is you'll notice it's smart enough once it missed to try again that last time. And it, it failed, but it does tend to take more than one shot at something. It's not just following, you know, a prescribed uh, list of actions and then, hey, if I if I messed up, um, you know, I'll, I'll go do something else. It's, it's actually following, it's trying different things to try to reach its goal. And if we did more of these test runs while it was training, you would see a lot more of that. So, and you'll notice it's continuing to get better. Um, that is, uh, our graph is telling us that we're maybe starting to peak here a little bit, around 250. That's 250 is probably the top score. Um, but uh, yeah, we are we have successfully trained a, uh, a robot to open doors. So if you made it this far, congratulations, and thanks for sticking with me. Um, I'm going to cover one more thing in this video, and uh, then we'll talk about what we might do a little bit later. So I've mentioned parametric experiments a couple of times, and that's basically just running an experiment with many different um, iterations of, you know, parameters, sizes, etc., and uh, seeing how those affect training. So this is probably a good place if you are uh, if you're a Git user, go ahead and check your code into Git, save it as this is working. Uh, we're not going to do anything else to the main code base. I am going to hack it up just a little bit though to show you what a parametric experiment might look like. So this is also where our, our graphing is useful. So I'm going to go ahead and stop execution and. I'm going to clear out our logs. So something you probably want to do, and we could write code to do this, but I've just I prefer to do it by hand if I'm you know developing locally. I'm going to clear out all of the networks under temp because I no longer need them. Or actually let's uh, let's copy and paste. Let's uh, just rename. 
temp move td3 to td3.back. And we're going to do the same thing move logs to logs dot back. All right. We have saved off our, uh, our logs and our temp directories. We no longer need them. If you came over here and refreshed TensorBoard, it's now empty because it's monitoring an empty directory. So let's get to our experiment. And this is pretty simple the way we've set this up. So all the functionality is baked into this, you know, sort of block here. Um, so we're base we're just going to take from, um, you know, best score down, and we're going to say for. Let's see, game in range 10. Or we'll even say, uh, we'll call it, we'll call it experiment. Experiment in range 10. We're just going to do this 10 times. And instead of a number here, we're going to say experiment. And then we're going to change something. Um, the important thing here isn't what we're changing. I've played with all the variables. The important thing is the, the idea of what we are attempting to edit. So let's say we're playing with the actor learning rate. And we want to know what happens as we get a progressively smaller um, learning rate. So we're going to do... Um, we've got actor learning rate. We're starting with 001. And we're going to come down here and say uh, actor learning rate equals actor learning rate times uh, 1.2. We'll just increment it by 1.2 every single time. Or sorry, we want to go smaller. So let's go with 0 0.8. So it's just going to get that much smaller um, for every run of the code base. Other things we want to change to do a, an experiment like this. We no longer want to load the models because we don't want it to build on the experience of previous runs. What we actually want it to do is, is give us a printout of this is how I did with all of these um, different you know, parameters, all of these different configurations, and uh, then come back and, and we should be able to look at the graphs and see which one did better. Now, for the purposes of the video, I'm going to make this like 10 games each, just so it'll actually run um, while we're talking about it. Uh, in reality, I make this number about 1,000, and I'll make it 1,000, and then I'll you know walk away for a day and go do something else and just let it sit there and, and think and crunch. And uh, you know when I come back, I've usually got some kind of information waiting for me on what works best for this particular problem. So we've got our end games, we've got our experiment loop, and we've got our empty tensor board. Let's hit go and see, uh, see if it works. All right. So we've got our random actions here. Those are our ones and our twos. And then it's you know going down and starting to, to take some real actions. And we set it to 10. So after 10 episodes, it should, yep, loop back around to zero. So what we can start to see here is we now have a score zero. You can, you can see why I put more information in these, uh, these headers now. So you can see, you know, for score, uh, from, you know, run zero here, we ran with a learning rate of 001, and we got these results. For a, an actor learning rate of 001 with, you know, some trailing numbers here, that did not end up being a very clean number, um, but you get the idea. So for a slightly smaller learning rate, here was... Um, a, a different result here. You can also set reload data. Um, I'm going to just refresh. So hey, we, we had a smaller learning rate and it picked things up uh, more quickly in that example. Um, an even smaller learning rate and this one tanked. Now, 
you don't really get any good information with it only being nine runs. I would not actually look at this and say that, you know, yes, a slightly smaller learning rate is better. You really want to let it go for hundreds or you know, up to a thousand um, to start to get any, any good information. But this technique is very useful. Um, you know, a, a change in modern computing is that you, the computer's time is a lot less valuable than yours. You know, if you go back to the, the punch card era, you had to get everything right because that computer time was valuable. Um, today, your time as a, as a developer is much more important than the computer's time. So if you can do something as simple as what we just did um, and wrap a loop around a series of test cases and have it graph the results, you are going to you know, save yourself a tremendous amount of time and you're going to, um, you know, help. You're going to help yourself solve problems in a way that uh, isn't predicated on you personally sitting in front of the computer for for hours and hours on end. You can just let the computer sit there and loop and do it for you. So with that, I think that's going to conclude um, this series of uh, videos on robotic arm manipulation, at least the the first section. Um, I did see a couple of comments asking for to, to see if we could put together a robot that could take images and learn based on image input. So I will work on that at uh, some point in the future. And I may also come back and show how to do, um, you know, picking up blocks or other tasks with a robotic arm in addition to just doing the door opening tasks. Um, but I think at least part one is complete. Uh, I would appreciate if you, uh, you know, if any of you liked this, if any of you followed along and, and built the project, um, post your own results. Post, uh, post your own repos. If you get it working with other, you know, something other than uh, opening a door, um, let me know how you did it and how the code worked out for you. Thanks and uh, good luck.